Okay, so the last time we were looking at um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, the basic equation is ax equals lambda x, and we need a solution such that x is not equal to zero. You also saw that this always occurs in, I mean, by definition, it occurs in pairs. That is, an eigenvalue has an associated uh, uh, eigenvector with it. And further, uh, if ax equals lambda x, a minus lambda times the identity matrix uh, times x is equal to zero, which is a homogeneous set of equations, which means that a minus lambda i is a singular matrix, which in turn means that the determinant of the matrix must be equal to zero. So from that, we deduce that lambda is an eigenvalue of a, if and only if determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. We also define sigma of a to be the set of eigenvalues of a, and uh, therefore a is singular if and only if zero is in the spectrum of this uh, matrix A. So this is called the spectrum. Okay, and we define the characteristic polynomial as P A of polynomial of degree n and it always has n roots uh, counting multiplicities and these n roots are the eigenvalues of it. so this uh, so we have a procedure of how to find um, eigenvalues we first solve the characteristic polynomial or we find the roots of the characteristic polynomial and we find that gives us what lambda i's are and then we find eigenvectors by finding the null space of a minus lambda i Okay, so this is a procedure that will work uh, reasonably well for small dimensional systems, but if you have very large uh, matrices, then you'll have to use other methods to find eigenvalues and eigen. Okay, so that's basically a short recap of what we did in the what we saw in the previous class. Today we will continue this discussion, and we'll also discuss uh, about one very important concept called similarity. Okay, so uh, in the last class, I stated this result um, that if uh, if a matrix has distinct eigenvalues, then uh, the associated um, eigenvectors will be linearly independent. Okay, and so here is a lemma that essentially makes this point. Um, so if lambda one to lambda k are distinct eigenvalues. That means that none, no, none, no two of these are equal of this matrix A. Then corresponding to each distinct eigenvalue, there's at least one non-zero eigenvector, uh, non-zero vector, which is an eigenvector. And so suppose Xi is an eigenvector associated with lambda i. i is 1 to k. So there are k vectors. Then these k vectors, x1 to xk, um, form a linearly independent set. So let's uh, show this. This is a this is a somewhat interesting proof, so I thought I'll just go through that with you. Okay, so um, the proof is by contradiction. So suppose uh, it's not true, and instead uh, these k um, eigenvectors are actually a linearly independent set. So they are linearly dependent. Then what it means is that there is a non-trivial linear combination of these k vectors, which will give us the zero vector. Okay, and in fact, one can find a minimal uh, linear combination which will give us the uh, zero vector. So uh, that implies there is a linear combination with least number of non-zero coefficients say R of them
which yields zero. Okay, the zero vector. So we'll write that as um, so. Um, let's write that as. Say alpha one x one plus plus alpha r x r equals zero. Okay. So what I've done is I've assumed that uh, it's the first r vectors here that gives you the least number of uh, non-zero coefficients, which will give us the zero vector. But that's okay because I can always uh, uh, reorder or renumber these vectors if necessary. Okay, so um, the point is that all these alpha i's are non e not equal to zero, and further, r is at least equal to one, uh, at least um, is greater than or equal to two, or it's greater than one. So basically, what I want to say is alpha i is not equal to zero, i equal to one to r, and r is greater than 1 because uh, xi is not equal to 0. So you can't just take one vector and find a non-trivial linear. Okay, so you'll have to use at least two vectors and you're using some r vectors and all of these coefficients are non-zero. So, um, so all we do now is to multiply, pre-multiply this by a. So a times alpha 1 x1 plus etc plus alpha r xr is equal to 0 because a times 0 vector is just 0 but the left hand side is equal to a alpha 1 times a x1 plus etc plus alpha r a xr equal to 0, which means that a x1 is equal to lambda 1 x1. Alpha 1 x1 plus etc plus lambda r alpha r xr equals 0. So now we can multiply. So I'll call this equation 2. I'll call this equation 1. So I'll multiply equation one by let's say lambda uh, alpha uh, sorry lambda r one times lambda r minus two. Okay, the right hand side is the zero vector, so the right hand side remains zero. But if I multiply this by lambda r and then I subtract this, then I'll get alpha one lambda one sorry lambda r minus lambda 1 x1 plus alpha 2 lambda r minus lambda 1 uh, lambda 2 x2 plus etc plus alpha r minus 1 lambda r minus lambda r minus 1 x r minus 1 and the last term is lambda r, lambda r alpha r x r here and lambda r alpha r x r here so they cancel so this is equal to 0 and since these lambdas are distinct all these are all these coefficients will remain non zero But then what we've done now is we found a linear combination involving only r minus one of these vectors. 
but we started with the assumption that um, the this alpha one x one plus etc up to alpha r x r is the least number of non-zero coefficients required to get the zero vector. So it contradicts the. Um, it's a, so this has fewer than r non-zero coefficients. which is a contradiction. OK, so uh, now we can move on to another topic, which is that of uh, similarity. So we'll start by defining what this is. So B, a matrix B, is said to be similar to the matrix A in C to the n cross n if there exists a non-singular S in C to the n cross n such that B equals S inverse A S. OK, so this uh, this transformation S inverse A S applied on A is called a similarity transform. And what it really represents is uh, a change of basis of a linear transform. So if S represents a change of basis matrix, so given a, a linear a, a set of linear equations, say y is equal to ax, if I can write in a new if if I if I represent x in a new basis as s times z, where z is in the new is the, are the coordinates of x according to the new basis, then um, if I, I can compute y equal to ax as y equal to a times s times z. And uh, this y is now again in the old coordinate system. And so if I want to transform it back to the new coordinate system, I have to multiply by y by s inverse. So s inverse y becomes s inverse as times z. So s inverse y is like w, which is the coordinates of y in the new coordinate system. So uh, S inverse AS represents uh, the same linear transform as A, but in a different basis or a different coordinate system. So that's one way to think about this uh, similarity transform. So, um, so this similarity transform is a mapping from say A to S inverse AS. So given a, given a, a, a non-singular matrix S, if you, you can map A to some other matrix S inverse AS, and this kind of a transformation is called a similarity transform. And we will also use the notation B tilde A to, to, to say that B is similar to A. And this matrix S is called the similarity matrix. So this uh, similarity is actually what is called an equivalence relation.
Okay, what we mean by that is that um, it is um, reflexive. which means that A is similar to A. Of course, I can write A as identity matrix inverse times A times the identity matrix. So A is similar to A and it is symmetric. Meaning that if A is similar to B, then B is similar to A. So if uh, B equals S inverse A S, I can write A as S, B, S inverse. So there is another matrix um, such that, uh, so you can call that um, matrix T, uh, which is equal to S inverse, then A will be equal to T inverse B, T. And so B is, A is also similar to B. And finally, it is transitive, meaning that if uh, C is similar to B and B is similar to A, then C is similar to A. Okay, now what, what an equivalence class does is it splits the space of all n cross n matrices into equivalence classes. So Within an equivalence class, any pair of matrices are similar to each other. And if you take one matrix from the from a given equivalence class and another matrix from a different equivalence class, they will not be similar to each other. You cannot find an S such that B equals S inverse AS. So, so equivalence relations, that's one property of equivalence relations. So equivalence so let me put it this way. It's in fact true of any equivalence relation, not this particular one, but not only this one, but any equivalence relation um, on C to the N cross N partitions C to the n cross n into equivalence classes. So any pair of matrices in the same equivalence class are similar to each other. And any pair of matrices coming from different equivalence classes are not similar to each other. So basically, you can ask what properties do matrices in a given equivalence class share? And in fact, they share many, many properties. And this is what we are going to study in some detail. Um, so the first, uh, first uh, thing that the first thing result about what they share is that they share the characteristic polynomial. If B is similar to A, then PB of T equals PA of T. They have the same characteristic polynomial. This is very easy to show. It's uh, essentially a couple of lines proof. So PB of T by definition is the determinant of Ti minus B, which we can write as determinant of T S inverse S, identity matrix is S inverse S, 
And S here is the similarity matrix that will take uh, A to B. So, minus B is S inverse AS. And what I can do now is I can pull out S inverse from the left and pull out S on the right. So this is equal to determinant of S inverse Ti minus A times S. But we know that determinant of AB equals determinant of A times determinant of B. So this is equal to determinant of S inverse determinant of Ti minus A determinant of S. But determinant of S inverse is 1 over the determinant of S. So that is equal to determinant of S inverse determinant of S determinant of Ti minus A. Then these two obviously cancel, which is equal to determinant of Ti minus A which is equal to P A of T. So a corollary to this is that if B is similar to A or A and B are similar matrices, then A and B have the same eigenvalues. Counting multiplicities. So they not only have the same uh, distinct eigenvalues, but also the number of times the eigenvalue appears as uh, an eigenvalue of A is the same as the number of times it appears as an eigenvalue of B. So, so now question, is the converse true? If two matrices have the same eigenvalues, will they be similar? Yes, sir. Okay. So who said yes? Sir, Dhruv. Dhruv, okay. If A and B, anybody else have an opinion on this? Counting multiplicities. Are they similar? Sir, uh, I, I don't think uh, they uh, it is compulsory. Huh? Why? Uh, sir, uh, uh, if uh, they have same eigenvalues, uh, then uh, they will have same characteristic polynomial. Hmm. Uh, but uh, that is determinant of ti minus a should uh, is equal to determinant of ti minus b but uh, yes. even if uh, the equivalence relation does not hold uh, for, for different values of t and uh, b not equal to s inverse a it can be they can be similar uh, it is not uh, yeah. okay so uh, here's a uh, is a very simple argument if i consider to see 0, 0, 0, and 1 here. These matrices are not equal. Okay. Um, but what are the eigenvalues of this matrix?
Okay, what are the eigenvalues of the, the all zero matrix? Both of them are zero. Okay, they are these two matrices. So one thing you can keep in mind is that if a matrix is triangular, then the diagonal entries of the matrix are the eigenvalues of the matrix. Okay, that is easy to show and you should also try try that out for yourself and convince yourself this is true that if the matrix is upper triangular, the diagonal entries are the eigenvalues. So for matrices like this, which are upper triangular, you can just read off the diagonal entries. Those are the eigenvalues. So both these matrices have 0, 0 as their two eigenvalues. But uh, they are not similar. Why are they not similar? Because if there was an such that S inverse this matrix times S was equal to the all zero matrix, where S is a non-singular matrix, you can simply pre-multiply and post-multiply by S and S inverse, then you will you will get an absurdity that 0, 1, 0, 0 equals the all zero matrix. So it's not possible that these two matrices are similar. So they're not similar, although they have the same eigenvalues. So the answer to this question is no. Sir? Sir? Yeah? Uh, sir, you said, uh, uh, I was looking into that, that uh, if uh, B is sim similar to A, then you write B equal to S inverse A, right? So if we yes. multiply S and post multiply uh, S inverse, then we can write A equal to S B S inverse. Yes. Uh, but we also know that if A is similar to B, then B is similar to A. So from there we can write A equal to S inverse B S. No, not through the same similarity matrix. That's important. Okay, so so this is what you said is correct. If B is S inverse A S, I can also write this as A equals S B S inverse. S and S inverse are not the same matrix. So I can write this as T inverse B B T where T equals S inverse. Okay, so actually the when we say two matrices are similar, Okay, uh, depending on the direction in which I want to execute the similarity transform, the matrix S, I mean the matrix S depends on the direction in which I want to execute the similarity transform. So I can write, so for example, so that's why when we say B is similar to A, what we mean is that there exists an invertible S such that B equals S inverse AS. We write it like this, but of course, it also means that A is similar to B, which means that there is a different matrix T such that uh, A is equal to T inverse BT. Uh, but that T is not the same as S. It's T, is, T is actually equal to S inverse. And in fact, this um, matrix S, okay, this need not be unique. Okay, we'll see that later. There are, there are possibly many different S's such that E equals S inverse AS. Okay. Okay, sir. Thanks. Sir. Yes. If, if uh, two matrices have distinct, I mean, say, same eigenvalues which are not zero, hmm. then will they be similar always? Okay, so that is something to think about. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll see many more results coming up, and then I'll uh, the answer will become obvious. Okay, just hold on. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so a direct consequence of this. Okay, but maybe I can just answer this question in this way. So suppose I consider the matrix one, one, zero, zero. Sorry.
okay now clearly these two matrices still have the same eigen values both are equal to 1 but clearly it's also not possible that there is a matrix s such that uh, this identity matrix equals s inverse times this matrix times s so if there existed such a matrix now this is the identity matrix 2 cross 2 implies that if i now pre multiply and post multiply by s and s inverse i should have 1 1 0 1 equals the identity matrix which is not true okay so it's possible that the matrix has non zero eigen values uh, and the eigen values are the same but the matrices are not similar to each other okay but what if the eigen values were non zero and distinct that we will see okay so since um, similar matrices have the same characteristic polynomial they have the same number of non zero eigen values counting multiplicities and the number of non zero eigen values equals the rank of the matrix and so uh we have the result that, that's one way to think about it but yeah i'll tell you another way uh the other way to think about it is if b equals s inverse as uh multiplying a matrix by a non singular matrix does not change its rank and so as a consequence um left or right multiplying left and right multiplying by the non singular matrix retains the rank of the matrix so if b is similar to a then a and b let me just write it so similar matrices have the same eigen values counting multiplicities and similar matrices also have the same rank 